the ABC launched a series of rural TV programs, including Countrywide. And in 1991, Landline, at noon on Sunday. Hello, I'm Doug Murray, welcoming you to the very first edition of Landline. Good afternoon around Australia. Welcome to Landline. Hello, I'm Kirsten Aiken. Welcome to the program. There were big conversations in Australia about farming. There were big dust storms. Why are farmers in those areas? Cotton was being questioned. It, it had lost its social licence back then. The community was really starting to ask, for, I think for the first time, are you guys in the right place? And then they started coming up with answers. And that was, I think, the great thing about Landline is we were able to go and find the, the people who were thinking outside the square, the people who were trying things and going early. The very year Landline was launched was a momentous one for Australian agriculture. The wool industry was plunged into crisis because of an unsustainable reserve floor price, leading to a huge stockpile of unwanted wool and the largest economic collapse in Australian history. The Federal Minister for Primary Industries, John Kerrin, scrapped what he described as the holy grail of the Australian wool industry, the reserve price floor scheme. There were warehouses all over Australia chocked to the, to the gunnels with, with wool, and one of the suggestions was they put it on some barges and take it out of the Pacific and sink it. The reserve price scheme was the biggest disaster perpetrated on rural Australia in the history of rural Australia because the bureaucrats got it wrong, the industry got it wrong and the politicians got it wrong. And the result was a total and absolute disaster. And I don't think the industry has actually recovered from it right now. This was the image of home engraved on his mind. He'd managed to stave off the inevitable through the drought years of the 60s, making the most of what little rain there was. But with debt growing, mortgages pressing... But of all the stories from rural Australia, there are none more evocative and dramatic than drought. One of the ones that persists in this country, naturally, is dry, dry, dry times, like, like we're seeing in, in Queensland uh, and many other places at the moment. Minimal rain over the last three or four years. And, and you have to cover those stories and the effect that they have on individual human beings, communities, townships, the rundown jobs uh, and so forth. This is absolute mental torture for these people. They wake up in the morning to a blue sky and look out across almost barren wasteland. Uh, that can be so productive. They go to bed at night wondering, you know, what is the future? And I've got to say, I, I see these people, I talk to them regularly, and I hear their cry for help over the telephone. Do you feel helpless? Yeah, there are moments that uh, Um, sometimes you do. When you show people what a drought hit area looks like, I think that is like a real gut punch to a lot of people. You don't have to explain a lot. They can see it. And it's incredible that how many city people react quite viscerally to the stories on television about drought. And then you, you twin what's happening with the landscape with the people who are living through it. And they're looking for new ways of dealing with the next drought while they're going through this one. I remember the, one of the first programs we did, Someone Must Care, because it was a situation pretty much as it is in parts of Queensland and Western New South Wales now, where it had been a long drought and, and, and people were, were, well, at their wits' end. But of course, in those days, unfortunately, there weren't the support services that, that they have now, so things were probably much tougher for them then than they even are in droughts now. Having grown up a country boy and 
looking at droughts over the years, I don't think there's been a period in our history when the droughts have been so prolonged and so, so severe as they have in the past 25 years. I mean, people in Western farmers and graziers in Western Queensland, for example, could expect normally five or six good seasons out of 10. Now it's more like two or three or maybe four if they're lucky. And not only is it the, around more often, it's the ferocity of these droughts. It, like the drought out there at the present is just absolutely and totally catastrophic. From drought to flooding rains. As ever, climatic extremes such as natural disasters provide some of the most dramatic stories. Sheep can't survive very long even in shallow water, so an operation like this saves the grazier hundreds of thousands of dollars. Six inches rise in the river and you've got four inches of water out there in the flat, so those sheep could have been standing in water in trouble for the next month or so. It's uh, town 270 kilometres to the west of Rockhampton and experiencing its uh, worst flood on, on record. And they're saying that uh, this peak will remain for around about the 12 hour mark. It's going to remain pretty steady uh, for the rest of today before falling slowly. For me, I've covered a few floods, cyclones around Queensland. And it's at those moments that you feel a real tug to not just put a microphone under someone's nose or a camera in their face, but to then, when they're opening up during a time of, for many, tragedy, as they're you know, cleaning out their house after a flood has moved through with piles of mud, that you're there on a hose or on the end of a broom to, to help as well. You can't, you can't just walk away. It's a story that stays with you and the people stay with you too. And you find yourself calling them three months down the track to check in, six months down the track, 12 months down the track. They don't become interviewees. A lot of the time they also become friends. <laughs> <laughs>